So how's it going guys, Marty here, and the 2023 Crunchyroll Anime Awards has just concluded and it's time for me to probably moan at the results because every year do they make some stupid decisions. Let's see, I've managed to not spoil myself, like I say, the ceremony literally finished all of about 30 minutes ago. I've not been spoilt yet, so let's react to this together. But these are the ones that we want to know. And our first winner was the English voice actor was Zach Aguilar, who was the voice of David in the English dub of Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Well done to him. I think we voted for Amelie for Dress Up Darling. Yeah, we did. Um, so our vote didn't win there, but you know, I'm happy for Zach. Uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners was amazing. Uh, and I heard the English dub was actually pretty good. Um, our winner for the Japanese voice actors was Yuki Kaji, who is the voice of Eren. Yep. I mean, Attack on Titan's massive, he does a great job. Um, I think we voted for Farouz Ai, for Jolene from JoJo's, so another one we voted for that didn't win, but yet again, I'm not too disheartened. Of course, Attack on Titan's going to win stuff every year, it's the biggest show at the moment. Um, and as of recording this, the final season, hour-long special for the first half of it, um, came out, and... Yeah, I see it's already gone to the top of Mouse. Um, best Romance, Kaguya-sama. I think we did actually vote for Kaguya-sama. That latest season was an absolute... It was chef's kiss. Amazing. Plus, when you see what it was compared against... Oh, no, actually, I don't think I did. Did I vote for Kaguya? Or did I vote for Love After World Domination? I can't remember. Go watch my last video if you want to see what I voted for. Either way, Kaguya winning. Amazing. Kaguya uh, Ultra Romantic Season 3 was amazing. Um, but like I say... Romance was okay this last season, I suppose, well, this last year. Um, like, Call of the Night, I enjoyed. Um, Kami was fine. Dress Up Darling was fine. Didn't watch Shikamori, I heard it was uh, mid at best. And I really liked Love After World Domination. It was something different, but, I mean, Kagi is always going to come out on top. It's literally like the... Uh, it's not the finale, because they had a film coming out, um, but it's, it's basically wrapping up such a beloved series. Uh, best Fantasy, Demon Slayer, now... No, I don't agree with this. I really don't agree with this at all. Don't get me wrong, Demon Slayer, um, Entertainment District Arc was great, fantastic, some of the best animation we've ever seen. But in terms of fantasy, when you've got things like Maiden Abyss Season 2 and Mashoka Tensei, Mashoka Tensei just had huge anti-tubers like Giguk, absolutely love Mashoka Tensei. And I like to think, you know, when you become an anti-tuber that high, you tend to have good taste in anime. So if, if he thinks it's it's peak of, especially in the fantasy genre, I say it's more fantasy than what Demon Slayer is, really. If I had to pick, I would shame, say, Mashoka Tensei right at the top, followed up by Maiden Abyss, then, then Demon Slayer? Ma no, ranking a Kingsford, then Demon Slayer, for, like, if we're talking purely best fantasy... It's disappointing to say the least. It's anyway. We move on. Best drama: Attack on Titan. I think I did vote for Attack on Titan for best drama. Um, like I say, in terms of a drama sort of perspective, Attack on Titan is it's always high stakes, and it just makes more sense to vote for that for drama. Like Cyberpunk Edge Runners, for me, was my top anime, um, and that's what I voted for for anime of the year. But in terms of best drama, I think. Attack on Titan as a whole because it's been built up so much and we've had so much with it. Um, it is more like a political drama than anything else. I mean, 86 could have probably won this for drama. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with Attack on Titan winning that. Best Comedy, Spy Family. What were the nominations? Kaguya, Uncle from Another World. I haven't actually watched. I have heard it's good though. Your boy Kong Ming, I really do like, but I understand not a lot of people watched it. Did we really not have that many comedy anime this last year or anything? But, like, Spy, Spy Family's funny, but, I mean, it's not, like, a, a true comedy, really. If anything, I'd say Kaguya Sam is funnier than it, but, uh, yeah, Spy Family, well done. It was a great show. Best action, okay. Demon Slayer, that's fine. I think I did vote for Demon Slayer for best action, because arguably it is. I mean, something like Licorice Recall could have won, um... Probably should have won because it was, I like voting for things that are a bit different. JoJo's, I'm surprised that didn't get anything. But it's hard to beat Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer is really... They push the boundaries of animation, I understand that. Most uh, Must protect at all cost characters. I did say when was voting for this, they literally just made this category for Anya, didn't they? They really wanted to push Spy Family this year. Um, 
I mean, they had Kotaro, they had Bocce. Marine's not really a protect character, is she really? But yeah, they, I feel like they really did just make this category just for Anya Forger. Um, best supporting character also went to Anya Forger. Um, no, I voted for Rebecca here. Rebecca was so much more of a better supporting character because I, I think I said this when we did the voting. Anya I class is like a joint main character in Spy Family. Like you have Lloyd, you have Yor, and you have Anya who were kind of like a trio of main characters. Whereas Rebecca was truly a supporting character um, and she was the best. And then like I say, my second pick would have been Ai Hayasaka from Lover's War because especially in Ultra Romantic she really came into her own and became this more fleshed out character nothing against Anya but like I say she's more of a main character a joint main character to me even a supporting character Rebecca just felt she did so much such a better job as a supporting character in Cyberpunk best main character we've got Eren Yeager I mean there's always going to be lots of love for Attack on Titan we say this all the time it's a shame that Shisato missed out from Licorice Recoil she was an absolutely amazing main character for that series David from Cyberpunk arguably could have won this as well you see so much of David's life in such a short, because it's not a long uh, anime, it's like 12 episodes in it or something like that. The fact you see him from like such a young man and see his life just develop and, well, if you've not seen it get worse over time. I mean, Eren, yeah, but I mean, we've also had like, how many seasons of Attack on Time we had? A lot. We've had a lot. So he's had the character development to get to this point. Um, Bodgy obviously could have probably won from Ranking of Kings. Another show that I feel gets overlooked a lot. I think it did win a lot last year, but still, I think people have forgot because it was like two cores and it spread over into this year. People have already forgotten Ranking of Kings, um, but it's a it's a great show that probably should deserve a bit more recognition. Um, best director we have Haru Sotozaki. I'm sorry for my poor pronunciation. I think I went for Cyberpunk here. I did because um, just that story in general was just so well developed and I think I said this at the time when voting the thing with cyberpunk as well is that it's a completely original story that's why I feel like not taking anything away from the director of um, Demon Slayer or any of these other shows but Demon Slayer had source material so they had something to work with and they they knew how to do certain parts of it it's kind of hard to explain but like cyberpunk was completely original completely original characters the only thing that's not the only thing they had off of base of Cyberpunk was the world, and that was just from the game. Um, whereas Demon Slayer, it's a complete series. The manga's been finished for ages now. They had an established world, established characters. They knew how they acted. For me, Cyberpunk should have won that, but, you know, Demon Slayer also slapped. I'm not going to take that away from them. Best anime song, The Rumbling. I'm not surprised because it was actually an amazing song. I think I voted for my non-fiction, which actually in reflection I probably should have changed and probably gave to the rumbling. The rumbling is an absolute banger, but in my opinion all the Attack on Titan openings bang to be honest. Either that or maybe Shadow's House. It's nice to see Shadow's House get an appreciation here as a vote. Um, season 2 has been a lot better than what Season 1 was. Um, but yeah, Attack on Titan winning a lot again. Nothing against it. Attack on Titan is a really good best film, Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. Um, yes, I did vote for JJK0. Uh, um, I feel like the only thing with this is that, don't get me wrong, JJK0 was an amazing, amazing film. Um, but I also feel Jujutsu Kaisen was the only film that kind of got like a proper global release that lots of cinemas actually showed. Because like, even someone like me who lives in a town in the middle of nowhere even my cinema played Jutsu Kaisen Zero but it didn't play anything like I mean Bubble was a Netflix exclusive I think but I, even things like Dragon Ball, The Deer King even One Piece wasn't shown in my cinema but Jujutsu Kaisen was so I just feel the presence of it more people got a chance to watch Zero plus it also came onto Crunchyroll later on for, um, for subscribers anyway so it just meant a lot more people could watch it not taking anything away, it's an amazing film. Best score, Attack on Titan. Again, I feel like this is a repeat of last year, Attack on Titan just winning everything. I think we've, as if you're a Trash Taste fan like myself, we all vote for Kevin Penkin for Maiden Abyss. It's a shame that he didn't win that. Um, but like I say, when you're competing with the likes of Attack on Titan, it would have been nice to see Maiden Abyss get some more love. It's. I think that's a mix of Attack on Titan obviously being massive and everyone watching it. 
and also maybe a mix of something like Maiden Abyss streaming on High Dive, I think it was, second season, so not so many people wanted to subscribe to another platform if they're already subscribed to things like Funimation and Crunchyroll and Netflix and they didn't want to pay for another one so maybe a few people missed out on Made in Abyss if you have missed out on Made in Abyss please just even if you just pay for a month just binge it best ending sequence we have got Spy Family which was comedy fair enough I think I gave mine to Call of the Night actually here because it did have a really good intro and outro um, Spy Family is just obviously a lot more popular. Call of the Night also is probably suffering from the fact that it was streaming on High Dive. A lot of people probably missed out on it. Um, surprised Kaguya didn't win here either. Uh, another banger out outro. I mean, yeah, well done Spy Family, but I feel like this is just going to be a pure Attack on Titan Spy Family uh, landslide, isn't it? Best opening sequence, Attack on Titan, The Rumbling, one best song, it's going to win best o opening. Um, I think arguably maybe Cyberpunk could have won something. Actually the Spy Family opening was pretty decent as well, but like I say, Attack on Titan opening is just hit different. Best continuing series, this is actually surprising for me. One Piece, I mean, I know One Piece is massive and people love it, but I was sure that something like, when you see the contenders here, Attack on Titan, Demon Slayer, Jojo's, Kaguya, Maiden Abyss, and you already see how much things like Attack on Titan and Demon Slayer and even Spy Family was a continuation. How much they've already won stuff. I'm surprised that something like One Piece won. I mean, <laughs> well done for One Piece for breaking up the formula a bit. Um, but I mean, I've not heard anything particularly outstanding about this newest season. Or, well, new season. Continuation of One Piece that I thought I was sure Attack on Titan was going to win this. Um... But yeah, nice to see something different. Best new series, Spy Family, of course. I mean, yeah, it did break the internet. I'm surprised Cyberpunk Edge Runners didn't ring, win here. Like I say, Spy Family is just massive. It's it was one of those shows that when it came out, it just kind of blew up the internet for a while, didn't it? There was a lot of hype when the manga was out before the anime was even announced. Best animation, I think this is actually something we voted for. That's actually won again. Um, obviously, a lot of my votes haven't won anything, um, but yeah. You can't deny Demon Slayer, from an animation perspective, just outdoes everything else here. It's, I think I might have voted for, I think I did vote for Demon Slayer, but I do need to give a shout out to uh, Akebi Sailor Uniform. A great, great show. Very short series. Right, we're on to the last three now, and we've got Best Character Design, Best Original Anime, and Anime of the Year. So, we can already see them here. Um, best Character Design, Demon Slayer. Um... I think I went for Cyberpunk here because, like I say, original characters, they have nothing to base them off. Personally, I think Cyberpunk, like I say, should have won that. Maybe followed by JoJo's. JoJo's has some great character design. Obviously, Araki just great at creating very different looking characters that aren't just the norm. Um, David Production just did a great job of bringing them to the, uh, the big screen for us. I mean, Demon Slayer is always going to win a lot. I wish... This happens every year with Crunchyroll, I understand popular shows are going to get the most votes and all that, but it's, I don't know, I'm getting a bit tired <laughs> of just things like Attack on Titan and Demon Slayer just winning every year and winning everything. Don't get me wrong, I love both shows, I really do, but I think other shows should get a shout out, like even Dress Up Darling, some of the, the character designs in that are, are really, really good. Uh, Ranking of Kings as well, like I say, all of these deserve something, it just seems that Every year the awards are just dominated by like two or three shows. Um, I think that will be a bit different next year because we will have the finale for Attack on Titan. We'll have Chainsaw Man. We'll have another Demon Slayer. I mean, it's going to be one of those things where there's going to be so many big shows all happening at once. And all the shows we've had from this year, it's going to be a bit more of a contest, I think. Just because instead of having one or two massive shows um, and a bunch of... Uh, good shows but smaller in their audience instead we're going to have like six or seven just absolutely massive shows that everyone's watching all the time and we might see some upsets and it'll be interesting best original anime at least something different here licorice recoil well done licorice recoil um was a great show great very short 12 episode anime um i'm glad people enjoyed it i did see actually a fair bit of hype I mean, all these shows, I think, deserve something. I never watched Healer Girl, I never watched The Orbital Children, I never watched Yuri Deco, but 
Vampire in the Garden I thought was a great, very, it's a very short story, but it's great if you haven't watched it. I think it's on Netflix. Birdie Wing Golf Girls, another great, if you like, quote unquote sports anime, I suppose it's a sports anime. Um, but Licorice Recall, it was the best buddy cop thing we could have ever asked for. Two great characters. Yeah, it's great that they've done something like original anime because it means something that is not one of the big three or four shows is going to win it. And then finally, Anime of the Year. Thank God Cyberpunk Edgerun has won it. If I had seen Demon Slayer or Attack on Titan again, I would have absolutely screamed. Cyberpunk Edgerun, as you can't deny, was an absolutely amazing show and it's easily my Anime of the Year. That's why I voted for it. Don't be wrong, Attack on Titan could easily win it. I think overall it's a better series than what we had with Cyberpunk, but Cyberpunk was just so fresh and so different and it was just a great story. So yeah, those are the winners for... The Crunchyroll Anime Awards, as per usual, I'm always disappointed half the stuff I vote for doesn't win. Um, but yeah, tell me how you feel in the comments down below. Uh, I'm a little pissed off as usual because only three shows won everything. Um, but yeah, tell me your thoughts, anything you agree with, anything you disagree with. I thank you for watching my reaction to this and I'll see you next time.